Yo, yo, what up, YouTube? So, a no BS guide on Ymir. Starting off with his passive. Ymir's 2, 3, and ult. When he hits enemies with them, applies Frostbite. It lasts for 4 seconds, and it increases the damage that he deals with basic attacks by 100%. Enemies who are also applied by Frostbite, it looks like this. It's like the purple stuff around him with the skin. Enemies who are applied with Frostbite also deal 10% less damage. So it's a really good tank passive. Uh, you deal more damage and they deal less. Uh, starting off with his 1. It's a wall, you can put it through chokes. Anything that can go through a wall normally, like Isis 1, uh, got abilities like that. They will be able to go through this. It's not impenetrable. It doesn't have any unique effects on it. Uh, you can also cancel this ability. Now going with the two. It has a four second slow. It does a lot of damage. And the slow is pretty fat. It's like 35%. Yeah. Now going with the three. It's a freeze. Um, maxing this does increase its stun duration so be wary of that if you feel like your team's following up with you then you can start maxing that or they're not CC chaining um, they're pretty much you know not getting diminishing returns off of your freeze so like they're waiting for your freeze to end you can start maxing that out and we'll start off with the ult The more that you charge it, the more damage it deals. Now, they made it to where when you die while charging your mirror ult, you can still get the damage off. So before, if you died while charging it, you wouldn't do any damage and you would just die. So I'm going to show you a little clip of that. One second. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to go into leveling Ymir. Now, starting off level 1, most of the time, if you're playing in Conquest, Support, or Solo Lane, you're going to want to start off with the uh, 2, because that allows you to clear the wave as efficient as possible. And then you're going to want to hit the 3. Level 3, it's debatable. Um, if you feel like... You have good synergy with it, like a Ymir wall into a Hu Yi one. That's always really good to pick up at level 3. But if you don't have a lot of synergy, um, getting the 2 is pretty good for helping your ADC clear. But for the sake of this, we'll put the 1. And then if you know the guy, or if you know that your team can do the damage, I would highly recommend maxing your 3. It makes it a lot easier for your team to hit stuff, and if you know that they're going to follow up with you. The damage increase is pretty big. Like, level 2 for this is 90, and this is 160, so that's 70 damage. Uh, that's, that's pretty high, to be honest. And it scales up. It keeps getting worse and worse. Like, this gets higher by so much more, but... The stun duration is fat, like it does go up, so if you feel like you have a good team, max the 3. Level 5, max the ult. Like I said, just keep on leveling the 3 whenever you can. Now, your ult, it goes up by 150, but with this new Ymir change, it's pretty good to level up, but I still think that the 3 is more valuable. And then after you get the 3 maxed, you can ult, uh, start maxing your ult. And then from then on, your 2, max your ult, then your 2, and then your 1. That's pretty much how you level up your mirror. Uh, pretty much once the 3 is maxed, uh, start leveling up your ult whenever you can. Okay, so getting onto the standard build for Ymir, this is up against mostly physical. Uh, this is what I like to build uh, when I'm tryharding. But 
You gotta remember when you're building a mirror, you root yourself three times with your abilities. So you have to be able to gap close. If somebody has a jump, they just jump over your wall, then what do you do? You have to slowly run at them. So being able to have more base movement speed than the enemy is crucial when you stop yourself so often with your abilities. I can't stress that enough. Some people don't realize that. Ymir has three roots on himself with his abilities. It's, uh, it's pretty rough. So movement speed, very valuable. Uh, this would be Guardian's Blessing at the beginning of the game, but it's a really good option. Um, I would say Sav and Mantle are interchangeable, but Sovereignty, you really want to get these aura items on as early as possible, so I like that. Uh, Pride Wind's just good all around for you, Mir. Um, after you ult, you get that fat shield. Uh, but yeah, I think that's the standard cookie cutter build for Ymir. Movement speed is always good on him. That's all that you need to know. Uh, he gets destroyed by slows, so Winged Blade is one of the core items if the enemy has a lot of slows. Uh, but yeah, let's get into the next part. Alright, so on to the next build. This is my more aggro focused. It gives you 30% CDR. This is replaced... Uh, well, Guardian's Blessing is replaced by this at the end of the game. Yeah, you get 30% CDR early on. Your roams aren't as potent because you don't have that extra movement speed. And Ymir's pretty slow, but uh, the Winged Blade will make up for that pretty early on. Voidstone gives you more damage. 10% uh, taking off enemies' protections when you deal 100% extra with your autos off of a slow or something. That adds up, and that uh, that really does. Talisman of Energy, just so, you know, once you're killing stuff, you really can chase people down with Wing Blade and Talisman of Energy. It's it's like a mini... When you slow them, it's, it's like you got hastened, man. They can't run away from you. <laughs> It's pretty funny. If you try it out, you'll know what I mean. Uh, but yeah, Mantle gives you another form of CC. Really good item. It also is hybrid with cooldown. Super strong. If you feel like the enemy team has a bunch of CC on you, though, and you feel like you can't initiate, try to get a Magi's as long as they can't pop it easy. Uh, and don't let them pop it easy, you know? Buy Blink, go in with your Magi's, get your stuff off, don't let them affect it. And you'll do your job in the team fight. But a more reliable option is definitely Mantle. Yeah, on to the next part. Okay, so I'm just going to show you guys auto canceling on your mirror so that way, you know, if you didn't know, now you do. You can auto one. It's really good. You can also body block people if they're trying to get away. Now, one note, if you're playing up against Ymir, you never want to run in a straight line. Because they'll just wall you off and it'll stop so much of your time. Like max rank, I think it's six seconds, isn't it? Yeah, it's disgusting. And it's, if they're running away, you just do that and then you block off their options. So if they're trying to run away, you can go to the right and just body block them. So that way it's pretty much like you're just pinching them. Yeah, you can auto two, auto three, and you can auto alt. Those are his auto cancels, pretty standard for pretty much every guy in the game, but just in case, if you didn't know how to auto cancel, auto and as soon as you see the white number you want to hit your ability that's what an auto cancel is yeah that's pretty much it uh make sure to watch out for diminishing returns on cc and what that pretty much means is when you cc somebody there's a white bar that goes around them with hard cc that is um, if somebody else uses CC, then the duration of that stun or uh, 
uh, mez or whatever is going to be decreased and it goes over time uh, so pretty much try to wait for that white bar um, if you're not starting up the CC chain if you are then you know you just used it so it doesn't really matter uh, but yeah those are the general tips on the mirror and hope you guys enjoyed I hope you learned something and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.